Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are primarily talking about oil prices which have gone negative in the US for the first time in history, and then we also have a couple other stories for Tesla as well. Tesla stock on the day today was down an even 1% to $746.36, which compared to the NASDAQ also down 1%. All right, so I think the oil price news is the biggest news for the economy and business world today. And this does have some impact on Tesla, of course. And it's kind of confusing, not necessarily intuitive. So I wanted to walk through exactly what's going on here, as I'm sure a lot of people have seen the headlines about oil going negative. So first off, let's actually talk about what went negative. These are oil future contracts that went negative. And specifically, the contracts that went negative in value were the contracts for oil to be delivered in May. Generally, this works out fine because people that are purchasing contracts to have oil delivered generally want to eventually have oil delivered. The problem right now is that demand for oil is way down because of the coronavirus situation, and it has been exacerbated by the price cuts from Saudi Arabia and Russia over the last few months. Normally, a price cut would increase demand. You have more potential uses for that oil when it is a lower price. But of course, that logic doesn't apply when the market is already in an oversupplied situation. Bringing that back to the contracts then, if you are in an oversupplied situation and you just don't physically have any room to take in more barrels of oil, even though you had a contract that said that you would purchase those, you're going to look to sell that contract off to somebody else that wants to take those barrels instead. Normally that's fine, but if nobody else has space that's going to be available specifically in that time frame, which in this case is May, then you're not going to be able to sell that contract off. Handling and storing oil is difficult because it is a toxic chemical, so there are costs associated with that. Obviously, a random person on the street can't just take delivery of 1,000 barrels of oil and store them in their apartment. So there's a finite number of potential buyers that can actually handle that, especially when we're talking on the scale of oil, where we're talking tens of millions of barrels per day. So on the production side, if you have a contract for a buyer to purchase those barrels, you're going to produce those barrels, you're going to be preparing to deliver them. But from the buyer perspective, you're sitting on way more inventory than you thought you would have because of the significant decline in demand. So originally you might have forecast the need for a thousand barrels in May, but because you have all that excess inventory that you didn't already move through, you no longer have that need. And it may even go further than that. You may not have that need and you may not even have the space to take that delivery. Unfortunately for you, you are contractually obligated to do that. So if you can't, you need to then sell off that contract to the highest bidder. And if nobody wants any of the oil at this point in time, well, then you're going to have to end up paying somebody to take it off your hands. When that flips, that's where the oil price becomes negative. And when we're talking about these contracts, those prices are only negative for the May timeframe. Crude oil for June, delivery in June, closed at about $21 today. And for November, it ended around $32. So the two factors here that are causing this negative price is the May timeframe, the required delivery of those barrels in May, and nobody having the space for that, and the costs associated with storing this oil. Those future prices being higher, that is something that occurs from time to time with commodities. That's known as contango. So in the case of today, we have the May contract trading at negative $37 and the June contract trading at $21 per barrel. So there's obviously opportunity there. If you're already set up where you can actually take delivery of these barrels of oil in May, somebody will pay you $37,000 to do that. And then theoretically, you could go write a contract to sell it to somebody in June for $21 per barrel or $21,000 netting you $58,000 between the two transactions. So if your cost of storing and acquiring that oil is less than that, then you're gonna make some money. The other interesting factor here is that people that aren't actually involved in taking delivery or producing oil do trade these oil futures contracts. I'm not well-versed enough in the oil futures market to understand exactly how all these transactions go down, but imagine you're just a regular investor who is trading these contracts and you have a May contract that you think is gonna go up in value over time but unfortunately it goes down in value. You decide to wait it out and say, okay, even though it's only $18 here last weekend on Friday, I think that's pretty low for oil, so we'll see what happens over the weekend. Maybe this contract will go up. Well, then we sit here on Monday and okay, now it's $10, now it's $5, and oh, now all of a sudden the price has gone negative. Well, if you've been sitting on that contract, you've gotta get rid of it at some point because you cannot take delivery of those barrels of oil. So there may be a situation in the market where enough people that are not actually willing to take delivery have purchased these contracts, hoping to sell them at a higher price. No higher price ever came. And now that we're at the end of the road for those contracts, which by the way, for May, expire tomorrow, those speculators have to get that contract off their hands, no matter what it costs them to do so. I'm guessing, though again, I'm not super well informed in this area specifically, my guess is that that is one of the reasons we saw such a sharp and steep decline today, especially once things flipped negative. 
Hopefully that all adds some clarity around what's going on today. In terms of the impact to Tesla, the most obvious is that lower oil prices will lead to lower fuel prices for internal combustion engine vehicles. So the total cost of ownership advantage of an electric vehicle versus an internal combustion engine vehicle as it happens over time will not be as significant. And if all other variables were held constant, which is never the case, but if they were, that would mean lower demand in general for electric vehicles. So that's a general statement. When we think about how that applies to Tesla, I think most of us view Tesla as a demand constrained company in general, at least maybe not every single second of the year. If that is the case and demand is lowered a little bit from a ceiling that Tesla can't hit anyway, then the net impact on Tesla is actually zero. We just don't really have any way of determining that for sure. The most important thing is that Tesla has created a compelling vehicle, likely the most compelling vehicle in the price ranges they play in. And that does not happen just because of lower fuel costs. Otherwise we would see 40 to 50 mile per gallon vehicles dominating the industry. And that's just not the case. Total cost of ownership is important. And as we head further and further downrange, it becomes probably more important, but electricity cost is going to decline as well. So maybe the spread isn't as big, but Tesla is still going to be cheaper to operate. And aside from that, Tesla's still going to continue to work down the total cost of ownership through both the initial purchase price, through things like Tesla insurance, and through things like autonomy eventually. Price per barrel of oil is not the be all end all of total cost of ownership for a vehicle. And it's not like gas just goes to zero dollars. I mean, especially in Europe, there are a lot of flat taxes. So even if all the other parts of gasoline were free, there's still going to be that flat tax and that's going to make gasoline a relatively expensive fuel option. The market seems to understand most of this. I mean, we only saw Tesla down 1% today, NASDAQ down 1%. In the past, it did seem like Tesla and oil did trade a little bit more evenly, but I think for the most part, Tesla and the market have moved past that. The only other thing I really wanted to discuss today is the new design for the Cybertruck. So Tesla has updated the imagery of the Cybertruck on the Cybertruck pay page on tesla.com, and designer Pablo Kubarle has actually made that into a little slider where you can compare the old version with the new version. So the link for that is in the show notes, but it's pretty cool to play with. You can see that the lines have changed. The central horizontal line of the Cybertruck is now parallel to the ground versus a slightly forward slope previously. The extension of the truck bed past the rear wheel has been decreased by a little bit. And the window sills and potentially even the ride height of the seats, especially the rear seats it looks like, has been lowered as well. So overall, a shorter vehicle now than before. Again, that comparison is in the show notes if you want to check it out, but that will wrap it up for today. As always, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Tuesday, April 21st episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.